you're going to open up the CSV file, the comma separated value file in Excel or Google Sheets or some kind of spreadsheet program. And it'll have time in one column and then the potential for a certain height of a magnet drop, followed by the next height, followed by the next height. I'm just going to use one column here of data to show you how I would do some of the analysis. First thing I'm going to do is graph this. So I'm going to select the data. I have 180 data points. You have over 2,000, I believe. And I'm going to choose Insert, Scatter Graph, No Lines. And this is what I get. Of course, I get this because I'm graphing a sine function. <laughs> your, your graph is going to look a little different. But I'm going to show you how to do the analysis. So when you graph this, you should get something that looks just like the picture in the lab handout. Once you have that, you want to include one of the representative graphs in your write-up. This is Faraday's law, and we're trying to show this relationship with the data we have from our dropped magnet through the coil of wire. The induced EMF in the coil of wire should be proportional to how fast the magnetic flux is changing. So when we look at this graph, the EMF is this how high and low the two peaks go, the peak to peak voltage. The rate of change of the flux is determined by how fast the magnet is moving. If we get the magnet to go faster, the magnetic flux through the coil will be changing at a faster rate. And if we make the magnet go slower, it will change at a slower rate. So we drop the magnet from different heights and the speed of the magnet, the velocity, determines the rate of change of the flux. It's easy to find the peak to peak voltage just looking at the data. The velocity of the magnet you can get using kinematics equations or energy conservation, knowing the height and that it starts from rest. We want to know what the peak to peak voltage is, the highest to the lowest. So I can come down here and say insert a function, that's the equal sign, tells Excel there's a function there. Maximum and I can highlight my data points. They start in row two and go to row 180, 181. And it tells me my maximum value. And now I can do the same with the minimum. C2 to C181. So I get my maximum value is 2.3 and my minimum value is negative 2.3. So my peak to peak voltage is the positive number minus the negative number. 4.6, that's my peak to peak voltage. Now I would do that for each of my columns of data. This data might be for uh, a 30 centimeter drop height and then maybe I've got a 40 centimeter drop height and a 50 centimeter drop height. I don't remember the numbers offhand but you do that for each column of data you do this and then you're going to graph the peak to peak voltage versus drop height. I think the x axis needs to be on the left side. 
Actually, you're not going to do drop height. You're going to do velocity. So for my 30, mil, 30 centimeter drop height, I got a peak to peak voltage of 4.6. The drop height was 30 centimeters. And so I need to figure out what velocity that is using my kinematics equations. And then I would do the same thing for the other drop heights, putting in the velocity, finding the velocity, and finding the peak to peak voltage. And then I create a graph with velocity on the horizontal axis and peak to peak voltage on the vertical axis. And I'd see if I get a linear relationship, put a, a linear fit and see what the um, coefficient is, the R squared coefficient that tells you how good the fit is. Hopefully it's very close to one and it tells you that the data is linear. The second thing we want to show is the relationship between the rate of change of the flux and the induced EMF. I'm going to drop the minus sign and the N. I'm just looking for proportionalities here. And physicists like to multiply both sides by dt and integrate. And what do you get when you integrate the EMF dt? Well, here I have a graph of the potential versus time. If I integrate the potential dt, I get the area under this curve. So the left side of the equation is just the area under the potential versus time curve. The right side of the equation gives us the change in flux. Now the change in flux should be the same for all of our runs. And the reason is that the magnet, if it starts high enough above the coil of wire, there's basically no magnetic flux going through the coil of wire. Now, if we start too low, if we start with a magnet just a little bit above the coil of wire, some of the flux is already going through the wire. But if we start high enough, we basically have no magnetic flux going through the coil. I started at 30 centimeters, so that's a pretty good distance above the coil. When we drop the magnet, eventually it gets right above the coil of wire and all of the magnetic flux from the magnet is going through the coil. So for every drop height, the change in flux is the same. It starts at zero and it ends at some maximum value just as the magnet enters the coil of wire. So we want to see if the area under the curve is the same for each of our runs. Well, how are we going to get the area under the curve in Excel? We're going to pick an approximation. We're going to form little rectangles. And the width of the rectangle is our delta t. And the height is given by our function. And the area is going to be equal to e times delta t for that little segment. And then we're going to add up all the segments to get the total area under the curve. But delta t is exactly the same for all of our heights, all of our drop heights, all of our data. Delta t is the same. So I'm just going to drop it and sum up my electric potentials and say that that is proportional to the area under the curve. The next thing I would do is find the area under the curve. So in order to do that, I'm going to sum up all the values, but some of them are negative. And I, if I sum up all of these values of potential over this interval, 
I'm going to get zero. Half of them are negative, half of them are positive. And I want to take the absolute value of this. I want, to, I want them all to be positive. We kind of have to play a trick with Excel to get it to do the absolute value because it's not easy just to take the absolute value. So I'm going to go underneath my column C, that, that's my data for this drop height, and put an equal sign and tell it to sum if this, the range I want is C2 to C181. And what I'm looking for is greater than zero. Minus sum if C2 to C181 less than zero. So it added up all the positives, and then it subtracted the sum of all the negatives, which is the same as adding the absolute value. And then I would have a value over here, area, and I would put the area. Now I can create a graph of velocity versus area and see if I get a horizontal line. I can do a linear fit and see if the slope is close to zero. In the end, you should have at least three graphs. One of at least one representative run that shows what the potential looks like as a function of time. A second one that shows the peak to peak voltage versus velocity. And a third one that shows the area versus velocity.